What a beautiful day, and look, the sky is full of white puffy clouds in so many different shapes. I see a fire truck and a dinosaur and the ruthless oppression of the working class. This is a review of the classic Star Trek episode, The Cloud Minders. If you have not seen this episode and you don't want to know what happens in it, be warned, spoilers beyond this point. You know, it's so nice to just watch an old episode of Star Trek, good old reliable TV comfort food as it was always intended to be from back before it got all woke and in-your-face political. Anyway, the Enterprise makes an unscheduled stop at the planet Ardana to pick up a supply of Xenite, the only substance capable of stopping a plague that is threatening to wipe out the vegetation of another planet. Uhura receives word that Captain Kirk is to beam down to Stratos, the cloud city of Ardana, to meet with the High Advisor, but Kirk's like, screw the diplomatic pleasantries, we're in a hurry. Beam me down to the entrance to the Xenite mines so we can collect the Xenite and get out of here. There's vegetation to save, people! So Kirk and Spock beam down to the surface of the planet near the entrance to the mines. They take a moment to admire the cloud city visible floating far above them. Looks kind of neat. But then Kirk notices that the Xenite, which was supposed to be here waiting for them, is nowhere to be seen. Then Kirk notices that he and Spock are being attacked by a group of the miners. One of them, a woman, warns Kirk against his interference. They scrap for a bit, then this guy, High Advisor Plasis, beams down with a couple of cops, and he's like, Hey, knock it off. And they knock it off and run away. Kirk asks Plasis what the deal was with all that just now, and Plasis explains, Oh, those are the troglites. They mine the Xenite and perform all the labor necessary to maintain the Cloud City, but lately they've been taken over by a small group of disruptors who have been making demands of the rest of us. Totally unreasonable demands, which I won't go into right now. Kirk doesn't really care about any of this. He just wants the Xenite so he can go save the vegetables. But Plasis tells him the Troglite disruptors probably stole the Xenite in order to pressure the city council of Stratos into meeting their demands. Plasis invites Kirk and Spock up to the Cloud City while his people begin a search for the missing Xenite. They arrive in Stratos. Plasis introduces them to his daughter, Droxine, who immediately hones in on Spock, like, how you doing? While Spock and Droxine flirt, Kirk reminds Plasis of how important the Xenite is. As they talk, Plasis notices that a troglite mining implement has been stabbed into the wall next to a sculpture. More disruptor vandalism. Those damn troglites. They don't understand art. Violence is all they understand. Kirk and Spock are led off to a rest chamber to relax and wait for news on the stolen Xenite. Meanwhile, guards bring in a troglite who's been caught in the Cloud City without authorization. Plasis blames this troglite for vandalizing the art on the wall and demands to know where the rest of the disruptors are. But the troglite ain't talking. And the first chance he gets, he pulls free of the guards, charges, and dives off of the balcony, plummeting to his death on the surface far below. Plasis is like, oh, that's a shame. While Kirk takes a nap, Spock delivers a voiceover where he wonders how Droxine, the sweet and innocent daughter of Plasis, would react if she knew what harsh conditions the miners were forced to live under. He hears Droxine fixing a drink in the next room and goes to flirt with her some more. Once Spock is gone, Vana, the woman miner who attacked them earlier, sneaks in dressed as one of the people of Stratos, and she and Kirk have another little grappling session in the bed before Spock and Droxine walk in. It turns out Vana used to work for Plasis and Droxine's house before being sent back down to the mines. She has returned to try and take Kirk hostage to provide more leverage to the cause of her fellow disruptors. Droxine's like, what do you disruptors want? And Vana says, we want to be able to leave the mines and live here in the Cloud City with the rest of you. Droxine says, but Stratos is for smart people, not dumb people. What would you dumb troglites even do here? And Vana says, uh, live in the sunlight? Might be nice. The guards come and take Vana away. Kirk points out to Droxine that living in the sunlight is something all people ought to have the right to do. 
But the troglites are workers, Droxine argues. They mine the Xenite. You can't mine Xenite in the Cloud City. There is no Xenite in the Cloud City. Except for the Xenite that's in the Cloud City because it was already mined from down in the mines. But you can't mine the Xenite that's in the Cloud City because it was already mined from down in the mines. It's already been mined. Now, does that change your mind? Spock says to Droxine, the troglites do all the work necessary to maintain Stratos, but they aren't allowed to share in any of its advantages. And Droxine says, yes, and that's just how we like it. We've completely separated work from leisure, and it works out just fine for us up here. Down there on the surface, all those troglites know is violence. But here in our Cloud City, we have totally eliminated violence. Cut to Vana being tortured by Plasis. Kirk and Spock interrupt, and Kirk's like, hey, stop torturing her. Plasis says, I'm trying to find the other disruptors and recover that Xenite for you, and what can these troglites possibly understand other than violence? Spock's like, they understand the same things you and I understand and expect from life. Equality, kindness, and justice. You know, it's so nice to just watch an old episode of Star Trek, good old reliable TV comfort food, as it was always intended to be from back before it got all woke and in-your-face political. Anyway, Plasis tells Kirk to stop trying to interfere in his society and go back to the Enterprise and let them look for the Xenite. So Kirk and Spock go back to the Enterprise, where Dr. McCoy has discovered something interesting. According to his analysis, the troglites are actually intellectually inferior to the Stratos dwellers, just as Plasis and Droxine have said. But that intellectual inferiority is not the result of natural evolution. In fact, the people of Stratos and the Troglites are the same species, and therefore have the same innate intellectual capacity. The difference is, the Troglites are constantly exposed to a gas released by unrefined Xenite, which has a debilitating effect on their brain function. But, wait, I just said that. However, McCoy has a solution, a filter mask, which can block exposure to the Xenite gas. Kirk is like, great, get me on a Zoom call with Plasis. He gets on a Zoom call with Plasis and says the troglites are suffering from exposure to a gas that damages their brains, but these masks will protect them. I'm going to offer to trade a supply of these masks for the Xenite I need. Plasis doesn't like that. For some reason, he seems threatened by the possibility of the troglites freeing themselves from exposure to the gas. Kirk decides to go around Plasis and offer the masks directly to the troglites through Vana. He beams into Vana's prison cell, helps her escape, but once they reach the mines, she turns on him and she and a few other troglites take Kirk captive. Vana believes the offer of filter masks is just another trick. She thinks the only way for the troglites to win their freedom is through violence. She forces Kirk to mine Xenite with his bare hands, and he does for a little while, but as soon as the guards leave, he jumps up, grabs his phaser back from Vana, and shoots the roof above the entrance to the chamber they're in, causing a cave-in that traps them inside. Then Kirk calls Spock on the Enterprise and has him beam Plasis into the chamber with them too, the idea being to prove to both Vana and Plasis that the effects of the Xenite gas are responsible for the supposedly limited intellect of the troglites, and without it there's no reason why the troglites and the cloud dwellers couldn't coexist as equals. After an hour sealed in the chamber, all three of them are feeling the effects of the gas, though they aren't aware of it themselves, and they're all getting pretty snippy with each other. Kirk and Plasis start brawling, so Vana grabs Kirk's communicator and pleads with Spock to beam them up, which he does. Later, the filter masks have been given to the troglites, which the Stratos dwellers have apparently agreed to if Droxine's positive reaction is any indication. The troglites have delivered the Xenite as promised, the division between troglites and Stratos dwellers is still sharp and contentious, with Vana confident about the strengthened position of the troglites and Plasis bitterly predicting that the filter masks will only make the troglites more vindictive and ungrateful. Kirk offers to have the Federation provide mediation so that the two sides can reach some sort of fair arrangement, 
But Plastis angrily refuses, so Kirk's like, okay, thanks for the zine height, we're out. Then he and Spock leave, and that's the end. This episode really demands to be considered on two levels, and when I do that, I realize that it works much better on one level than on the other. As a sci-fi adventure story, it's a little slow and unfocused and repetitive, Kirk and Spock are apparently on a very tight schedule. They need to get this Xenite to the planet affected by the plague as soon as possible to avert disaster. But aside from the occasional show of impatience from Kirk, there's no real sense of urgency to anything. Kirk is attacked or captured or almost captured by the troglites three times in the course of the hour. Spock's flirtation with Droxine is fun, and it's interesting to see that side of Spock, to see him flirting with someone while maintaining his typical calm, logical demeanor, but it never really goes anywhere. And the resolution leaves an awful lot unresolved. Kirk's plan is to convince Plasis and Vana of the need for the filter masks and then trade the masks to the troglites for the Xenite he needs, but their exposure to the gas and its effects only seems to convince Vana. Plasis is still as resistant to the troglites' demands for equality and hostile to Kirk as he's ever been, and in the end, it seems like after they were beamed out of the cavern, Kirk just decided to hell with it and traded the masks to Vana for the Xenite, regardless of what Plasis had to say about it. The whole bit with the three of them arguing and fighting in the cavern feels padded and poorly thought out. By the writers, I mean. Speaking of poorly thought out bits, it's never made clear what exactly the troglites want. Vana mentioned something to Kirk about wanting help in the mines and wanting to leave the caves to live in the Cloud City, but that's all we get. Both Vana and Plasis refer to the demands of the disruptors, with Plasis insisting those demands are completely unreasonable, but we never find out what specifically those demands are. A sharper focus on the details of this conflict and what the stakes are for both sides would have helped a lot. That's only one level, though. The other level on which the Cloudminders operates is as the delivery system for a message about workers' rights, and on that level, it works magnificently. The episode presents the basic conflict that is at the heart of all labor disputes in a way that is simple and easy to understand. Spock says it right out. The workers who create and maintain the luxuries enjoyed by the rich are not allowed to share in the benefits of those luxuries themselves. Or, put another way, labor is not permitted to enjoy the fruits of their labor. The contrast between the working class and the wealthy is as clear as it could possibly be. The workers live underground in caves. The wealthy live in a utopian city in the sky. The wealthy enjoy a life of pure leisure, free to pursue art and scholarship to their heart's content, while the workers mine the Xenite and maintain the city for apparently little or no compensation. But the episode goes beyond simply framing the issue. The greatest value of the Cloudminders as a statement on the importance of workers' rights is found in the details. The subjugation of the troglites is justified by Plasis and initially Droxene by the fact that the troglites lack the intellectual capacity to appreciate life in the Cloud City. Physical labor is all they know, all they're capable of, and violence is all their primitive minds understand. Except that isn't true. The apparently low intellect and violent nature of the troglites is due to the conditions of the work they're forced to do. Removed from those conditions, or given the opportunity to protect themselves from them, the troglites are equal in every way to the supposedly enlightened and highly evolved residents of Stratos. The episode's even sharper than that, though. Plasis sneers at Kirk's proposal to give filter masks to the troglites, arguing that no filter mask could make up for centuries of evolution, insisting that his people, the Cloud Dwellers, are superior because they built Stratos while the troglites did not, and Spock points out that the unequal evolution of the two groups did not begin until Plasis' ancestors removed themselves from the caves and the constant exposure to the gas. The people of Stratos are only able to believe themselves superior to the troglites 
because they are descended from troglites who left the caves and were able to evolve outside the effects of the gas. And now Plasis wants to prevent the modern day troglites from doing the same thing. I'm on the boat, now pull up the rope. The Cloudminders not only lays out the situation clearly, it also argues for which side we ought to be on. I know I've joked about this a couple of times already, but I'm always baffled by modern day fans who complain about how political Star Trek is now. Have they ever watched Classic Trek? Even more mind boggling are those who acknowledge that Classic Trek was political, but try to argue that it didn't take sides. Sure, it was political sometimes, but it wasn't preachy. It wanted you to make up your own mind. Really? You think the Cloudminders plays it down the middle? You think the message of this episode is both sides have good points and how you feel about it is really up to you? As soon as they realize what's going on, Kirk and Spock are entirely on the side of the Troglites. Even though the Troglites have attacked them and stolen the Xenite they need, and the Stratos dwellers have extended them every courtesy. Again and again, the episode asks us to sympathize with the troglites, not to reflexively condemn their violent methods, but to seek to understand why they feel compelled to employ those methods. Spock says in his voiceover that the troglites have been made bitter and hateful by their harsh lives in the mines, and that their violence is driven by their desperation. Spock also tells both Droxene and Plasis that their society, arranged in this way, is illogical, and forcing the troglites to exist in constant hardship while the others live in luxury is unthinkable for an evolved culture, which the Stratos dwellers claim to be. The episode also points out the hypocrisy of Plasis and the residents of Stratos with that most cutting of cuts from Droxene telling Spock that violence has been eliminated in Stratos to Plasis preparing to torture Vana for information about her comrades. Because violence is only violence when it's used by the oppressed against the privileged. The other way around, it's just an unfortunate necessity. The only language those ignorant primitive people understand. In reality, though, it seems that violence is the only language people like Plasis understand. We see how impossible it must be for the Troglites to reason with the people of Stratos when Captain Kirk tells Plasis about the filter masks, how they can protect the Troglites from the gas exposure that limits their intellectual capacity and makes them more prone to violence. Plasis simply rejects it out of hand. First, he questions the scientific validity of what Kirk is saying. Then, when Kirk refuses to back down, Plasis tells him to mind his own business and stop trying to meddle in the affairs of this planet. There's just no talking to some people, is there? So yeah, judged by its plot, there's nothing special about the Cloudminders. It could be a lot better. But judged by its message, its clear understanding of the underlying issues, and its ability to pass along that understanding to the audience, it's a must-watch show. I might go so far as to call it the most unambiguously pro-labor episode of television I've ever seen, were it not for a certain episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine that I'll be reviewing in a few weeks. On the level of politics and social commentary, this is Star Trek at its best. Smart, insightful, humanistic, and most definitely taking sides. If you think otherwise, you must not have been paying attention. Those are my thoughts on The Cloud Minders. What do you think of this episode? Please share your thoughts with me in the comments. If you'd like to support this channel, and I sure wish you would if you can afford it, you can do so by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash steveshives, becoming a channel member by clicking the join button, or by making a one-time gift by clicking the thanks button, or via PayPal or Venmo, Links are in the description. Don't forget to join me and my best friend Jason Harding this weekend for our review of episode 8 of season 2 of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Our review will be up sometime on Saturday, and please come back next week for another retro review. Next time, this batch of retro reviews focusing on Star Trek's labor-themed episodes continues with a look at an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation, 
symbiosis. I'll see you next week for that. Thanks for watching and take care, everybody.